episode of Backyard Progression, where I, Bronwyn and Kenku, go through my backyard and make it a little bit better every week. So, last week it was rainy. We had just uh, gotten through a big snowstorm that melted and it was raining. So there was a lot of debris that I pulled out of the uh, black raspberry field. And there is just a ton of flooding. The creek is really high. And it doesn't help that some riverbanks kind of collapsed and different trees were making it impossible to uh, that any debris in the creek would then collect. So, it's always amazing to me when I come back to a previous week just how much things are different and just how much I end up doing in a week. So, striking things to keep an eye out for are the height of the creek, um, and just how, there's a few places I really worked on. Um, also remember to take the alternate path down so we get more unique vision. Sorry about that. So, um, it's amazing how much trash I pull out of the creek. It really impresses me every time something comes down and it's between cans and bags and uh, detergent bottles and oil uh, bottles. So, it's important to pick this crap up, get it out of here. I had a blow. I made the choice to uh, say that I would be cleaning up all of the trash, or the trash, on my place. All of the trash would have been folly, as it's important to know how these kinds of rituals and things work. Um, never bite off more than you can chew. It's very fairy deals kind of stuff. So keep that in mind, like, with your goals as well. And I feel like I harp on this a lot because I feel like it's super important. But when you set a goal that has progression to it, like what I'm doing here, it's so much more attainable as every step forward is a success. If you improve one thing, you've done good. Whereas if you make an ultimatum, like I need to get rid of all of the trash, like, well, that's too much. And you get into what's considered trash. And like, it can get really big really quick and you can feel like a failure if you don't live up to that expectation that you've set for yourself. So, like, it goes into doing things for the fun of it. So recently I was playing a lot of Minecraft and I just felt stuck. I didn't really feel like I had a good concept for where my progression is. So 
I stopped. Also, I made a hell of a work at this. Um, so you'll see in the next video, but a lot of this is gone over here. Um, but at the same time, it's still an issue down here. And I cleaned up a lot of this though. Cleaned up a lot of that and try and generally make these spaces nicer and better and easier to access for the creek. This creek's such a good focal point to work on. It really is so soothing to listen to. And it's just generally really cool. How often do you get to see water? This is the average person gets to see waterfalls. <laughs> I get to see them every day I want to. But it's important to like still like rein in the beauty of it. There's just a lot to be said in nature and taking a moment to just breathe and enjoy its existence. And I saw a meme earlier that was what I'm sure a lot of people have seen. Like, you think beavers just see running water and say, oh no, oh hell no. Um, but I know I have that kind of reaction when I see a lot of this debris. And sometimes I can't help myself but to go work on it. So, like I said, a lot of my work here starts with um, making sure that I've got, how to put this? So by starting with a walk, I set myself up for minimal expectations. If I get to the back and come back, I have done a walk. It's enough. But the ADHD, or I'm not diagnosed, so I shouldn't like be too liberal about that, but the scattered thoughts mind says like, oh, wait. Let's clean up over here, or here, or let's just move these sticks out of here, see if we can't do that. Because oftentimes I'll set out with that goal. You just move the giant pile of sticks out. Because that's something that needs to be done. It can be done in little parts. I only need to, you know, move a couple things and it's a success. So, it's one of those situations where I still need to learn how to fall. The bonks always remind me of that. So, in this week, I brought this tree down at this point, trying to get that to break is another story. You'll see a little bit more of that. Um, so, it's, <laughs> it's so interesting to just accept the distractions and go with them as school and Oftentimes we're taught to just ignore them, try to focus, and I feel like so much in life is rewarded from being uh, diverse and having a bunch of different perspectives. There's so much where if you look like if a game dev decided they wanted to learn more about nature, they could then use that in their game dev, especially if they do any kind of nature thing. 
so often there are developers trying to utilize nature's structures to create more, to do more. And it's always so fascinating when things cross over. So it's for sure bad when it's making life hard to live. Not saying that, how to put this, I'm not glorifying it by any means, but I definitely appreciate the ability to have something like this where I can hyper focus in on one section and really make it nicer and still feel good about the project. Like, there's too many projects where you feel like there's a definitive end point. There's something that needs to be, there's a standard that you're setting for yourself or possibly that's been set for you by society or um, other individuals. So it's hard for sure to to not judge yourself on others. You can see a lot of people's art and really have those pangs of, wow, my stuff sucks <laughs> in comparison. When if you had seen their stuff when they were at your stage, you'd be like, oh yeah, this is, this is similar. Everyone, no one comes out perfect at what they do. It just doesn't exist. You can't. You can have natural talent. You can have a head for it or you understand. And I feel like that often gets misaligned. Um, there was an interesting uh, study that utilized an electric current that put you into a flow state and it made learning a skill so much easier because it put you into a person's mindset that worked like that. Like, it's amazing how our lump of fat in our brain is responsible for everything. It's like, there's so much we don't know, and there's so much that we could be doing to make life easier and better and more functional for people. Just a shame we don't. So here's the other side of this that needs to get worked out. You can see that it's damming up here. And if we can free up some of these leaves and get things back to standing, it'll work a lot better. I already see it flowing. Just trying to like, so I've got a piece of something that I'm pulling and it turned out to be a lot longer than I expected. So it ended up being a lot of the uh, problem. I really want to build bridges, but all my bridges get washed away in these floods. So it's kind of hard to really think of positive paths and things.
So, the other bit of uh, damming is over there on this side. And I do actually pursue this a little bit. But it's. It is possible that part of this was responsible for a muskrat. I did not consider that concept, but it is. Um, all the same, this is just a lot. I'd rather not have it in the creek if I can. <laughs> just like gobs and gobs of debris all catch. So you can do what you can to remove a lot of it. You can get big handfuls. But the trick is you really need to get the sticks out, the things that are holding it in place. If you can do that, a lot of it falls away. So here you can see that this is lifting out and undamming. So utilizing your body correctly, you can really pull. And one of my best pieces of advice when working in the outdoors like this is um, assume you're going to succeed. Because if you don't have that in mind, you will end up on your ass. Like, too often I find myself pulling without the expectation to succeed, and it breaks because I did it, because, you know, why wouldn't it? And <laughs> you could really hurt yourself that way. It's, um, it's better to have a plan for success rather than uh, assume failure. And there's always that little glimmer of, what if I succeed? Like, it's too often, what if I fail? What if, you know, is it worth doing if, I, if I'm gonna fail? There's so much riding on this. Why bother? That mindset is super easy to fall into. It's a fallacy though, as you should try. Should um, you should try if it makes sense for your spoon level and all your other activities, but. you can't give yourself a good reason, like, if this fails, I won't have any money. Like, that's a good reason to not try something, sure. If, um, but recognize when you're catastrophizing, too. Like, if it's 20 bucks and you have $200 in the bank and everything's being paid for, you want to try something different, you think it might help, you think it might make your life better, I don't see the problem in trying. Give things a shot, take some chances. If it's reasonable, obviously. Like, I'm not, I'd never tell someone to really um, threaten their own existence. To try to make their life better, that seems like a really dangerous position to put yourself in. When little incremental steps, planning, um, putting stuff on a whiteboard, like there was a point in which I realized I needed a bigger bridge. 
So I put it on a whiteboard and I let it sit for most of a year. And I would look at it and be like, yeah, I need that. And like, it's expensive, sure. Like most home appliances are, but the quality of life and like thinking about it and being like, yeah, that would help. That would make my life easier and better a bunch of different ways. So every time I was like cramming stuff into my tiny fridge, I would like look at it and almost give like a mental check mark to be like, yes, this is that moment. This reinforces that purchase. This like actively is something that will be beneficial. And you can do that with things in your life. Like if you wanted to learn to draw and you were going through and you just like make that mental check mark of like, oh yeah, this is something that I'm going to need. Do that for yourself. Be right back. Let's get the next one up. Here we are again. <sighs> so today it is really frosty. We are at sunrise. Um, got really crunchy ground. It frosted, but overall the creek has receded as things evened out. But it's still running quite nicely. It's so hard when I did so much in the back. But let's go across the different route. So coming across here, over here. And then instead of taking this path, at some point, I remember like, oh yeah, let's go this way. And it highlights stuff like this that need to get utilized or moved or different aspects of making this path and really in working with it. So, being on this side of the creek. Inherently, the goal should be to wrap around, but I kind of forget that. Oops. So, miss out a little bit. And here I'm just like seeing all these different sticks. And it's like, oh yeah, I should get this out of here. But I'm getting caught up on grapevine. So I do a little tutorial here. Like, oh yeah, this is always good to show. So normally this stuff does not break, but if you make a small loop like that, and then you get it to snap, and then you can pull it up or down, depending on how it broke, it will break quite easily. So having hand tools and being able to like utilize just your hands to get through a lot of this stuff really goes a mile when you're in situations like this and you are caught on stuff and you don't have tools with you. So it's solid to know. And like I said, I should have looped around here, but I didn't. So just exploring space that hasn't been interacted with enough. So I realize I'm too far over, but I've gone too far at this point, so I'm just gonna continue on. <laughs> There's so many piles of sticks I need to move.
But this week I got a really big chunk of stuff taken care of. I feel really good about it. And I get to highlight it, which is nice. In my head, I'd like to run my last week and the current week side by side, but it'd be way too chaotic for me to handle to like, and it would shorten things dramatically. Like, I feel like most people enjoy things when they're given space and time. Here's some dirt, uh, dirt, deer, uh, fur. No signs of any bones or any kind of carnage. But it's always nice to look out for. Keeping on with the trail, um, usually there is a large uh, thing in the way here, and I've moved it back. So checking back on the creek where it was flooding, as you can see now that this is freed up, um, only that part remains, and I still need to actually get that giant, heavy log out of there. Or get it into the creek and then pull it off to a side. But you can see a lot of it move down here. I cleaned up some of this area to really work that, but I don't highlight that spot. That's, that's wild of me. Um, but I also cleaned out some rose bush from in here. That's easier and better. Just keeping space is nice. So I did a little bit of work over here as well. Not that I really show it out off too much, but there was some stuff that was fallen but not actually hitting the ground. It got caught by the grapevine over here as well. Did a little bit of work in the grove over here. But mostly it's just getting through and making sure stuff happens. As like, there'll be times where I just notice something's off. Something's different. Sometimes I bonk and just like, oh right, that's, that's not how that's supposed to be. But other times I will see things and just get fixated. So, if no one else saw, there was a giant tree branch that's down, a broken limb, if you would. <laughs> and um, it can get broken and moved over. So that's why it's so second nature for me to break things down into smaller pieces to be more manageable. So. Step one, if possible, is always to free up any of the trees that have been uh, taken down by said thing. We've got more grapevine, which again, using the same technique, breaking it and getting it out of the way, and then seeing if I can get it, this giant piece out. Not quite. I can get it around, but we've got a lot more branches that are holding it down and back, so we free those up. So we've broken off another piece, makes life easier. And you can see where, like, bonk, uh, a bigger project can be itemized. So from Probably gonna cut that, by the way. This giant fallen limb. 
Even though it's not broken, it's likely not dead, it is detrimentally in the way. So it ought to go. So step two is like, yeah, I can probably lift this. Um, but it's awkward and it's stuck and I'd rather break it if I can. It is kind of awkward to break, but see what we can't do. See where we've got give and clear our hands. We've got a pile already established. <laughs> and even though things get caught, it's still worth getting it out and over there so we can get this out. Because this is just a massive thing that's in the way. And it's like so many of the massive things in the way in our life that we often make a really big deal out of because it's a really big deal to us. But when we give it so much gravity that <laughs> we uh, end up falling on our ass, it it can feel like too much, but when broken down, a lot of problems are much more manageable, taking little steps each time we get the chance to, every time it makes sense to, breaking it down, moving it around, approaching it from a different angle. I was really trying to get the uh, large end out of there like by getting it around. After I'd broken all the branches, it was just easier to move it top side forward, even though that's traditionally harder to do. It ended up working out this time. So there's something to be said to, for putting your whole body into a thing with no uh, sense of consequences when you're doing it. And I feel like that's passion in a lot of ways. When someone's passionate about something, they'll like go a mile a minute, they'll be so excited, they'll be, you can feel it in the energy. And then when you can't match that person's energy, or like it just isn't something that has that for you. It can be really hard because you can feel the chain. You can feel the wind taken out of their sails. So this was the tree I was talking about. And this is another one of those situations where I was trying to show something in how I do different things like this. So you've got this tree that fell. The roots are still in place. You can still kind of see it, but um, there's a large root here that needs to get taken care of, but you can break and undo some of these other little roots, and that can give you a lot of leverage to get it out and away. So I have to come back with an ax to take out that large root piece, but otherwise that, that's ready to get out of there. And that'll be a lot nicer. So. <sighs> Part of having that passion, I find that not being disturbed or put off from being passionate Um, when you're in those situations, like someone, like you're all about a certain breed of dog or cat or whatever, and you get shot down and you get like the, oh, I don't like dogs. I don't like cats. I'm allergic. 
so you can't like fault them and it's just like oh yeah i guess but like still have that passion still like don't feel like you need to censor yourself when you're just enjoying something important to you that flower was really cute it was frozen with the frost and i was just like it's something we're showing off also back a bit there was the log that had mushrooms on it and uh, there weren't any mushrooms anymore i found that interesting um, but overall like i said i really need to learn to fall better <laughs> And it's something I do a lot more than most people, so <laughs> like it's it is something for sure that I've said more than enough times to like actively consider it a thing I should learn. It's probably good for you. <laughs> Not like if you break something. Like I don't want a broken limb. I've never broken a limb, though. I've only broken my collarbone. And that was from major mistakes. <laughs> but it's, it's so tricky, because I would think the tumbling aspect doesn't really work if you're tripped. You know, like I really don't have good time timing to do anything other than put my hands out. Like it really has to be um, muscle memory. Like you really just need to understand your situation. Like. It'll be wild if I can do that kind of thing on a video, though. At some point, I definitely need to upgrade this camera. It's good. It does the job. It's a GoPro. It's got the waterproof case that I use here, but it's showing its age for sure. You can see the stuttering. You can doesn't have a bunch of features that you'd want. This rosebush angered me, so I need to get it out of the way. So using its own tension, uh, I blocked it off with a stick that I just randomly found. <laughs> um, so yeah, put, put value on the things that are going to make your life better. And Put yourself in situations where you can be your most authentic self. So with that, I don't think I'm going to expl explore much more of those Minecraft packs. I might do a little bit more if I find one that's really interesting or if there's like a big update that like changes a lot of things. But um, if you're not having fun and you're like, you don't really have a good way of like expressing with a game, then don't play it. It's okay to leave games unfinished. It's okay not to uh, see through everything that those things turn out different than you expect. It's important to problem solve and work through things for your life and situations so you don't get caught up on the small things. <laughs> uh, it's so wild. <laughs> uh, 
I love lessons from nature like that. Like, sometimes it just takes a little bit of care and precision to clear your path. Sometimes helping others helps you. Mm. And sometimes you gotta take a deep breath and relax, understand that things are gonna be okay, and enjoy the little things like ice breaking. Uh, it's when I see that um, tree down, it makes me realize just how how different the path is from when it started. There's so much that this really shows off. A lot of people have been getting into Dwarf Fortress, and one of my favorite parts is the lore generation. Like, it simulates hundreds of years to get enough, like, backstory to have just in the game. And I find that so fascinating that there's, um, so much that can be said and done. So if I were lucky, this would be part of that and I'd be able to lift it up and it just didn't work that way. So there's just so much debris that needs to come out. I'll likely have to come back here with some tools and really just pull that stuff out of here so I can try to find the other section of log to maneuver. But as it stands now, I can't really do a whole lot. So, gotta move on. But, I started the task. I can have a mental note there to just be like, oh yeah, I can go take care of that. That's a personal quest I can maneuver. Uh, it's a shame, like, there isn't a more open ability for people to, like, sell things. Like, that is the number one uh, fantasy aspect of video games and it's permeated throughout and it makes a lot of sense but it's not something that exists being able to like go into a shop and sell them things <laughs> it would be so cool like That would be, it's funny how I think about games, I think about the culture and things like that. And it makes me wonder if we got it right there, because it is so permeated. Like, if you could get, even if it wasn't that much, like a quarter for a bundle of sticks. Sure, it's not great, but you could then utilize more things. You could do more. You could end up cleaning up spaces. 
the negative aspect of that is people cutting down bunches of trees and whatnot and actively devastating the land to make that little chunk of money. So I can see where there's pros and cons, but without a guaranteed job, without uh, without the guarantee of income, life is just really hard for so many people. That food costs money, shelter costs money. It's, it really, they really have put that old adage of money doesn't buy happiness on its head as they've made everything that would make someone happy cost money. But hopefully you can find some happiness in your own life. Hopefully it doesn't cost too much. And I hope that everyone can have a lovely week. Thank you for watching. And we'll be back next week. Be sure to follow on twitch.tv slash Kenku or if you're on Twitch, follow me on YouTube at YouTube slash C slash Bronwyn Kenku. If you like what I'm doing, feel free to tip. But I hope you all have a better day. Till next week. Bye.